It's October the 2nd, 2021, and you are listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And we're back with Adrian frantically waving. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can do it again if you like. <laughs> Hello. Emar is back, Jeremiah is here, Adrian is here, and I'm here too. And uh, we are back with another episode of The Future of Photography. And uh, today we want to talk about slow shutter. What's, slow what's shutter. so futuristic about the slow shutter? Before we start, can I just say great show last week? I really enjoyed it. Oh. Wonderful. Yeah, because yeah, I was, we, I didn't get to be part of it, about, but oh. ah, the future of photography is analog, apparently. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I really enjoyed it. Is. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> mm. Report from. Yeah, it's good show. Okay, I may have shown a little bit of bias, right, in my reporting <laughs> back from the photography show, but yeah, I'm all right with that. <laughs> well, it seems like that seems to be the most kind of interesting space at the That's moment. That's where the music it? is right now. I would yeah, think. Yeah. 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 It's all good. Definitely. Yeah. Well done. It's Thank you. The, it's the, the vinyl of photography. Mm. Right? Mm. Yes. So there you go. There you go. All right. Um, uh, Jeremiah, you suggested this topic, slow shutter. Um, let me yeah, hand I, it over to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking less about slow shutter, even though that is fundamental here. But, uh, you know, my thought was, how do we use the camera as a brush um, and embrace um, abstraction, you know, in, in a painterly fashion and use the camera not to capture ultra-realistic images, but impressionistic images um, and surprising images and, and um, to capture things that we cannot see with our own eye. Um, I, I thought that would be a very, very uh, fun thing to explore. It's something that I'm sure we've all done in our own way. Um, and it, it, it really is another way of approaching photography. You know, how, how it applies to the future as cameras become more um, controllable in terms of shutter speeds, ISO. Um, maybe we'll be able to shoot with uh, very, very low noise, but very, very high speed shutters, very low speed shutters with um, noise. We'll be able to control what, what frames or what moments we want to capture sharp or blurred, even within a single frame. So, um, you know, these are some of the things we employ when we do cinematic stuff by just layering. And, and I encourage people to explore this, and we'll talk about the different ways to do that. And, and it, this can be done in camera, and it also can be done in post. Um, and some of the fun things are just combining it. And in post, you don't need the most sophisticated, expensive software to do it. You can do it on a phone. Any any way that, that you can uh, address layering uh, and adjustment of, of, of kind of post-speed effects sometimes. And, and of course, uh, focus, which, which is also important in creating abstraction. So I just thought um, I'll kick off this thing with um, just showing, for those who are watching this, um, a photographer, Andrew Gray, Andrew S. Gray. And for those um, not watching, there's a link in the show notes so you can just uh, open and, and watch along. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and his, his work is absolutely beautiful. It, it, it speaks of, of Turner and it speaks of um, a lot of those, um, I, I guess, 18th, 19th century painters that were very, very uh, inspired uh, by weather forces, and and they were the ones that led to uh, impressionism. Um, there certainly is a lot of swirliness in these photographs. Yeah, I have to say, it? It, it, it in a good way. That's a positive. Mm, I see what you meant about swirl. the reflection uh, or the the link to uh, Turner. So uh, yeah, thinking about some of you know Turner's landscapes That's of the Thames Turner, and stuff like yeah. that is yeah, mm -hmm. very, yeah rem reminiscent of that in Beautiful some ways. Colors. Um, yeah, it's really, really interesting, actually, some really interesting yeah. stuff here. And he's, d he's done a lot of different work. Uh, these are obviously different folios that you can explore. Um, his work is also on OpenSea uh, for those who want to buy it and collect it. Um, he does a lot of stuff in camera, 
Uh, I think he has some videos of how he approaches his work. Um, that, those uh, techniques, I'd be interested to see some videos God, of that. Yeah, it, it looks they're like, beautiful. Really, and, yeah. It looks and, almost and like some of the, the so camera painterly. movement is selective. It's, uh, some mm. things have stayed still. Some things have got a very, very swirly. And, and that's... So it'd be interesting to know. What type of camera is he? Is he? Is, uh, is you know, digital? I, I don't know yet. It's, all, it's digital, and I don't. Yeah. I don't believe that for him it makes much difference. Yeah. Because um, he'll he'll use um, both in camera and post effects, but um, fundamentally, I think his post. This is my recollection. Uh, is really in the color balance and the color uh, saturation or lack of it um, to to kind of bring out the mm. kind of surprising effects of what happens. So that that's an ex just one example of using a camera as a brush and creating uh, landscapes that speak to a more emotive um, value rather than a representative value. And I I. I, I I'm taken with with his work, and I have, and I follow him on Twitter. Um, Looks like he also has a YouTube channel, so I might go watch that afterwards and see see how it is that he makes this stuff. Because yeah, is, he does. Really yeah, interesting. I, I think when I first uh, discovered him, I, I I went and I I watched him demonstrate his his process. I think he does uh, tutorials as well. So that that's an example of using the camera as a brush embracing abstraction and um, in a way an integration of painterly techniques. Sorry. <laughs> and there we go. It's been a great <laughs> episode. Um, Every time. <laughs> in camera, um, you know, uh, what's, what's fun is to experiment with things if you're ever in a rut uh, photographically, if you just mm. can't get out of your own way and you're uninspired, take your camera for a walk and just shoot things at one second, shoot things at 10 seconds, um, mm. buy an ND filter. Uh, don't even put your camera on a tripod. Just try to hold it still. Mm. Those of us who've uh, played with pinhole cameras, we, you know, we're more familiar with that technique and, and that kind of abstraction. Um, also, the compositions of, of handheld slow shutter are very interesting because you're trying to hold a frame and yet the natural movement breathing of a human is going to, uh, you know, is going to create some natural movement in it. And those things often are um, inspiring. So the next time around, when you look at your stuff, maybe you move it a little more or a little less, or you mm. you cut the shutter speed in half. Um, so those are things that when you break out of that, start to look at your stuff and play with it in post can be very, very um, inspiring and exciting um, to understand how color works. And, and it speaks to what is a pure photograph, like, you know, we've talked about this endlessly, um, about mm. how to define a photograph. But I, I think we're now moving beyond just the simple explanation that it is the capture of, um, of, a, of an object or subject um, onto which light has reflected and bounced, captured on a chip or, or film through a lens or pinhole, et cetera. Um, we've had this conversation in the Discord, and, and it's, it's an ongoing conversation. I mean, my own work, some of it is completely non-photographic, doesn't use any of those things, and yet looks like a photograph because the aesthetic is drawn from the history of photography and my own experience of photography. So I still relate to those images as photographs because their DNA lies in photography comments Ooh. Uh, I, I, I i'm with you on the happy accident thing actually so i've got in my head right now uh two or three images that i've made over the years where the happy accident of a slow shutter has kicked in i can think mm. of one which was a a, a portrait uh, a, a lit uh, a, fla a lit with flash portrait on a, just a simple sort of you know, um head and shoulders portrait uh, with a black background 
uh, where actually uh, the shutter speed, I'd forgot to, to take the camera off aperture priority and because of course I was shooting in the dark and therefore it came up with like a one second shutter speed but it froze at the end with the flash so you get the ghosting uh, of mm. your subject especially on a black background and it was a black and white photo as well you know uh, probably tri x or something like that yeah and yeah that's um yeah that 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 one springs to mind I've got another one actually Chris this reminds me of our trip to Bhutan um I remember we were out one night uh and you know there was a lit up uh a zong one of the the combined monastery uh right. castle type places that that uh we were fortunate enough to visit all, all lit up and i've got one of those and it's got squiggles all over it light trails mm-hmm. all over it because i uh I, I couldn't hold it still or made a mistake <laughs> or pressed the shutter button when i shouldn't have done or something mm-hmm. or, or forgot my tripod or whatever it was so yeah I, I love that you can sometimes get really you know happy accidents out of a slow shutter i think just letting go sometimes is is good yeah i i i think happy accidents are are they the kind of the 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 foundation of art the the entry yeah, level drug into absolutely. this world um i remember yeah. the first time i had i had my first slr which i think i was 14 or 15 and uh i couldn't afford a lot of film and it was of course time consuming cuz you would shoot and then it'll take a week until you have your stuff back but uh i remember trying a few things back then with longer shutter speeds with moving the camera just to see what would happen unfortunately as the as the cycle was so slow I, it didn't really stick i didn't really get anything that i could reproduce or build upon because it just took too long but um that changed fundamentally the moment that that uh, turned digital and uh, under full manual control and this was my impetus of learning manual photography to be able to to determine what the camera does and how long it stays open and what what gets really painted on the sensor. Sure, even the iPhone now there are lots of apps that one I think is called slow shutter. It's I, built I, I, in, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, so Actually, you can just uh, downloaded a new one the other day and it's just called um manual camera. Yeah. And it appears to it's very kind of simple. There's no frills to it, but it's really kind of nice to use. So just in in advance of doing this, I kind of started to, I downloaded it and started to play with it and it, with the slow shutter. Just and it's lovely. It does Manual lovely camera. So mm, yeah, very basic looking um, little icon and everything. It was. I'm having a look as we it. speak. <laughs> yes. There's, um, there's, there's quite a few actually my favorite photo that i ever took was a slow shutter photo as well but it was and it was a happy accident and i don't have it anymore it was it taken with the film camera and i just don't have the print anymore and i don't know where the negative is and it was um years and years ago and my whole degree show in college was slow shutter oh, wow. of like a figure in the landscape kind of thing and um, that was like an outtake from the one of the days I was out. And it was literally, it was my arm, my hand. Um, it was a very letterbox. I printed it in a really kind of a letterboxy format. And uh, I had loads of rings on my, a ring on every finger. And they, it was the glint of the rings in the sun. Oh, it was a gorgeous photo. <laughs> but um, yeah, I wish I still had it, actually. That well, was the you best can, thing you can I reproduce did. it. You can make it. <laughs> make yeah, it I often, I've often thought about that. Yeah, yeah, uh, I've often thought about you that. You know, the, the, the thing about it um, is also one might be kind of almost happy with it, but then the editing of these things become very interesting. Um if you're adept at Photoshop and some other uh, camera moves, you can actually paint in the blur or the or the 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 kind of overall stretch of it or the the um, distortion of it. Those are mm. those are possibilities in some editing. And if you don't overuse it, but you just enhance it and bring up different layers of color, uh, if you're using luminosity masking or color masking, those kinds of things can just kind of pull out a subtle dynamic of the color and really transform the image. So don't be afraid when you do that to just use that surprise, that abstraction, 
as as your first layer, as something that what do you see in it and what you can add to it and how you can change it. Those explorations without uh, an intention, without a real kind of end goal, not only uh, will keep you um, kind of involved in learning techniques, but there's no downside of it. And you can, mm. because there's no real mistake. It, it's just this process of ex- exploration of both technique and accident to create something that plants a seed for you to build yeah. on. And often that is the very thing you need to break out of that. You know, conversely, one can use slow shutter in very deliberate ways. I mean, the most common would be how we we approach a landscape with a choppy lake, for example. And and the thing, we've, we see a lot of these images, which is a dock that juts out into a water uh, body and and the water is absolutely dreamlike Mil- milky velvety. milky uh, foggy yeah. water yes mm. that's it and so it looks like it, it's an ethereal landscape doesn't really exist in real life to our eyes but the shutter and its speed smooths out it, it can smooth out clouds and it can smooth out water um, so that that's a very deliberate way. Of course, we see the same thing in an urban setting where we set it on a highly trafficked road and, and we're seeing the streaks of car lights, both fore and aft, that create this kind of abstraction. These are things that we've seen um, over and over again. Uh, Adrian pointed out a slow shutter with flash, um, I went through a phase in my fashion photography years where I, I just used that a lot. I, mm-hmm. I I was shooting with a Hasselblad, so you can adjust, you could trigger your flash kind of whenever you wanted. So I can shoot, say, at an eighth of a frame or eighth of a, a second or a quarter of a second. Fire the flash, move the camera slightly, or the or the the subject, and and it would capture it sharp, and yet everything would be ghosted and the light. T- tell you what, it's a re- it's, it's another good one for that. Um, is uh, which I've done in the past by heading out in in almost the middle of the night to the the woods down the road from me. Um, is to do light painting with, yeah. either with uh, a, a flashlight or torch of some kind, or sure. with a with a speed light. Actually, um, that's quite yeah. To to go out when it's properly dark and and open the shutter for thirty seconds uh and and then just pop away with, with a light and just you know add the light as you wish to 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 the to the scene much easier on digital by the way much easier on digital you, you, but the, or the the wire wool thing you know there's a a thing that they do uh, yes wire wool, but, yes yeah yeah, yeah i've very, i've always considered myself seems not, to be not a, competent a enough thing. not to set myself or the woods on fire <laughs> yeah. for, for that sort of thing so i've, I've stayed mm. clear of that one but it, it, mm. it is a good effect for that uh, speaking that speaking of that I, i'm just uh, uh, you you actually uh, robbed my next <laughs> my next subject uh, did which I? Is, uh, sorry no no uh, which I, I encourage you to continue to do uh, intuitively but but it is yes painting with light is really something that is very exciting i mean um yeah. i you know maybe just before covid uh i was at joshua tree and setting up a camera just as the light was creeping up below the horizon and then took a very you know high level one of these <laughs> military uh, flashlights oh, okay. and would p- paint a tree. And and it, it was absolutely beautiful. So you're using true painterly techniques because you can mm. highlight the leaves but keep the trunk dark. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah then, if you have a continuous yeah. light for that, actually you are literally painting the light, aren't you? Mm. Yeah, you're, you're painting or painting with light, whatever the right terminology is. Because that that's uh, I've seen yeah, something a... I've seen something amazing recently with uh, well the same principle but modern modern technology someone uh, ho- someone hung a bright LED off of a drone and then I'm there with you had the had the I, drone I'm... circle like the DJI drones you can program them to make circles around things so uh, he had the drone circle around a church steeple and so you ended up with a somewhat lit steeple with a halo around it he included the drone mm-hmm. in the shot and that was you just know, amazing 
You know, you guys, you're intuiting all my things. <laughs> oh, did I steal that, that one to... from you? As well? <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, 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 no. But 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 um, we, I just try to put it into our show notes here. Um, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So, so let me let Ruben, me ask a different question. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I, I want to show exactly what Chris was. His name is Ruben Wu. Uh, okay. W U. Um, and uh, Ruben Wu, of which I just found, if you, you um, bring his images up, you can just Google and bring his image page I'm up. opening it right now. And therein ah, yeah. is the human that you, do, you are talking about. Okay. He is a master at, at uh, landscape and drone uh, painting with lights, both programmable and not. Um, Very nice, yeah. Very clever. Th that circle is a drone yep. in a circle. Yeah, these these mm -hmm. are these are absolutely majestic, and he is a very um, he's become wow. very very popular in the NFT world yep. as well. Has he? So, ah, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. They, there's a they, there's a oh, I like that a, a, a huge amount of skill in in this. Mm. Uh, uh, amazing, yeah. uh, and and the creative vision to do it as well. Just yeah, beautiful. Yeah, he's he's. Actually, one of my favorites. Um, love, love his work. Oh, yeah, lovely. very nice, very nice. So I have a question around this actually, which relates to the the the, the technology, because there's two. Because mm. I think yeah, we're looking at Ruben Wu, Ru, uh, Ruben Wu's work here. Gosh, that's difficult to say. Mm -hmm. um, and that is an example of, for me where I think technology is helping take art to a new level with shows like slow shutter speed i had too many mm. tongue twisters in this show for me today uh so you know that the, the the drone technology there and the ability to do you know that sort of thing um you know it is great and takes the technology to a different place interestingly though if you go to the other end you know uh, uh to phones and cameras in phones they have fixed very wide apertures and you know we've just had a, another release of phones that have got yet wider apertures which are yeah, really difficult to do long exposure photography with unless you have a huge amount of computational power behind. <laughs> it almost seems like the, the, the technology is taking us away from being able to use uh, you know, slow shutter speeds and the creativity. Well, in, you know, in cinema cameras, not all of them, but many of them, we have built in NDs. So uh, whether they be, you know, um, electronic or we can add NDs to it, a little more difficult on the iPhone. If you have that creative urge to do that, you would need to get a, you know, I think, Adrian, you spoke of the, you know, the filter packs. Mo yeah, Mo I, have, I, have, I have. I have one, actually. But, yes. So, so. You know, they will do that on a regular camera. You just throw on a ND. I have one that, that is actually rotational. So, you know, it'll go from 6 to 10 or 6 to 13. Mm. Um, that's really fun to play with. Um, I expect as uh, these uh, cameras get wider and wider and faster and faster, that we will see the application of digital filtration come in or one's ability to lower the ISO uh, significantly. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's coming because I think people want that. Um, you know, you, you want to be able to shoot uh, in a controlled way and control your depth of field as well. But we, we're moving away from the subject. So um, the other thing that, that I think slow shutters and abstract photography um, it, it is very, very inspired by astrophotography. Now, that's something that I have not done. Um, I'm mm -hmm. fascinated by it, um, planting a camera uh, in a clear, open uh, space that, that, you know, has the night sky involved and, and keeping it open and feeling the rotation of the mm -hmm. earth um, in the kind of uh, you know, the, the, the image is that the stars are streaking in a circular fashion. Um, those are very, very beautiful. Obviously, photography through telescopes, which captured different um, gases and, and, and different color spectrums, and then applying those colors in layers uh, in post to create these absolutely beautiful color field massive exploration of the universe is is something that is akin to this kind of slow shutter obviously um 
I think we, we measure things in astrophotography in terms of distance, where you'll see, you know, an image taken of a certain light, which is a planet distance. And over a year, you'll see that in the same place at the same time, that planet becoming more distant. Mm. Um, so that's how they make these calculations of an expanding universe. And uh, given that our universe is expanding, um, you know, it just provides uh, some more tools <laughs> for, <laughs> for us to play with, uh, with our open shutters. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I encourage all our listeners to, you know, take an afternoon and, and think about this. Uh, panning is very interesting. Um, slow shutter, whether it be a quarter of a second, eighth of a second, one second, but pan your camera, streak it along. Now, you could do mm. that, you know, obviously, photographers who are photographing uh, motorsports uh, use this all the time where they will frame up on a car and as it passes, they will follow it with their lens. Everything else will be streaked, blurred and whatnot. And that will give the impression of harder, speed. Harder than it looks, but uh, rapid, yeah. yes. rapid fire on your camera does help there. And, and, but if you did the opposite, which is just plant your <laughs> your camera as the car streaks by, you would have a streaking bold of light and a uh, fixed image. So um, playing with that is also uh, very interesting. Again, in post, you can duplicate these kinds of um, these processes. In fact, I think that uh, in our Discord, we once had somebody who was creating through video games the look and feel of racing by doing those very, very uh, same techniques of blurring and finding the angles. And, and you know, um, so I think, again, I encourage both the, the in-camera and post as a way of exploring because sometimes you'll look at the image and go, well, that's, that's not very interesting. But mm -hmm. if you really <laughs> dig down into what you think is an unsuccessful image, just pluck one and really see what you can bring out of it. You'll learn a lot. And, and these, uh, this experimentation, even, even if you think that's cliche, everyone has done that already, I don't want to repeat what others have done, it's always, as you said earlier, always good to plant a seed, to try this and just to use it as a seed yeah. to start off from and to, to explore further from that point. I think it's helping. a good discipline for practicing. I was doing this it myself is, you know, just a couple so of days ago. There's so much learning in it. Um, just uh, uh, I took out, uh, I went for my my now reasonably regular weekly trip up to London uh, and I took <laughs> a little point and shoot camera with me did, yeah, and uh, I just, uh, in, in my commuter hurry, just decided, you know what, I'm not going to stop to take pictures today. I'm going to let it sort mm -hmm. out itself, but I'm going to mm -hmm. keep moving. And so I'll try and keep the camera moving in a, in a you know a line that will give me uh, a, a photo with some movement in it and you know what? It, some of them came out quite nicely I was just you know really really sort of trying to pare it down so I put the camera in a sort of grainy black and white super high contrast kind of you know JPEG engine mode uh, let it do whatever it wanted to do for exposure and just kept moving and kept moving the camera as I went and it's quite uh, it's quite good fun just to see what you get out of it I got a couple of shots I was quite happy with actually <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, my last trip to Japan, we were on the Shinkansen, you know, moving at light speed. And, mm -hmm. and I just kind of bolted my mm -hmm. cameras close to a rain swept window yes. and just, you know, for oh. hours took these mm -hmm. amazing images where sometimes I would just photograph the raindrops, but the background was blurred other times mm -hmm. shooting through the water as lens to a, a you know, a fast um, moving captured image. And then I, again, like you, I did a very high contrast, almost etched uh, image of, of, you know, moving images from a train and also using the reflections. It was absolutely fun. The trip went by just so quickly because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was so involved in seeing the world in a different way. I think that's mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. what photography presents and that's why the future photography as well as the past of photography the present is really there to encourage us being present and really really uh, grabbing the dynamic of the here and now and, and you know forgetting all this horrible shit that's going on. 
I thought we weren't going to talk about that today. <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not. But we'll stick with photography. That's it. Uh, you know, there are uh, things I, I think that that uh, Imar, you you were showing us some some images before the show, and I'll call that ghosts and impressions. Yeah, with slow shutters, so that yeah. you know a, a a camera locked down with a slow shutter and somebody moving through it. Uh, Dwayne Michaels is a photographer who mm. has used that very technique um, successfully over the years, classically to tell stories um, of of you know uh, implied ghosts that live in an mm. environment that react to us, and it it, it is a uh, Again, a, a fun thing to do is just, you know, Adrian, you could turn your family into ghosts. You know, right? And <laughs> tell a story coming. there. It's kind of fun. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Um, there, you know, we talked about pure color field painting, you know, um, with, with Andrew. Um, uh, we talked about turning so-so images into powerful abstractions just by kind of drilling down on those techniques. Also, I would say that when we get to printing these things, there is a whole other world that comes into it. If you take an abstracted photograph um, that you're reasonably happy with on your iPhone and you print it or you have it printed, you know, six feet by five feet, it will have a much, much different um, force than if you take that same image and print it in a, you know, uh, a six by six thumbnail, uh, you know, a yeah. tiny little image yeah, yeah. Um, that you have to kind of really lean forward to see. Both are, are completely valid in terms of the experience, mm. but very, very different. Ditto, you can have that image printed on canvas. Mm. Um, you could even send it away and have it painted. <laughs> oh, you can do all sorts of stuff. I mean, I, I remember a few years ago going to uh, there's a there's an annual show sponsored by Sony, I think, at a uh, at Somerset House in London, um, uh, Sony Photographic Awards or so, or something like that. I f I forget which. Well, well worth going to see if you have the opportunity. Uh, and you know, this time I went a few years ago. Um, they had a whole uh, section, a whole display. Uh, that was all on tablets, all on small tablets, because it was their digital section, and that was it. And they were design, you know, they wanted to display them digitally. So mm. there's all sorts of, yeah. You don't even have to print to put stuff on the wall these days. Mm. You can have a, no. you can stick a stick a thing on the wall. But thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I quite like printing actually, although I haven't. I do too. I do too. But while, I also but. like st sending stuff to a screen. Yes. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. Um. So, you know, again, the, the, I guess the connection between, you know, uh, what does that mean in terms of the future of photography? Um, personally, if I get a new bunch of kit, uh, if I get a new camera um, or even new lights, uh, I will always experiment on both the high speed end of capture and the slower speeds to really explore what what the camera is capable of and it's a it's a different experience shooting film that way and shooting digital that way shooting mm -hmm. the kind of uh, you know point and shoot version or a kind of uh, highly controlled digital camera um, and then you know plunging into some maybe simple post-production editing um, and those of, of our listeners who are adept at it really drill down on different techniques and different brushes to enhance what you see. So if you see a swirl, you can actually sample that and you can pull it and you can re-examine it and you can actually enhance it with a brush. And it doesn't, you know, when you start to add those things together, you won't notice the fingerprints on it it'll all seem that it, it was organic yeah you know what i mean no i i, I think yeah there, there's some good stuff out there i'm um, again uh mm. i don't know if any of you have <laughs> olympus cameras but olympus for some years now have had uh what a, a, a mode they call live composite mode 
I've seen um, it. I've seen it in action. It's actually quite impressive what it does. It is very. So I, I, I have it even on my little Olympus Tough camera, which is just a tiny point and shoot. It has it, um, and you, 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 you set your camera up, and you can see the picture building on. You put it into bulb mode, and you can see the picture building as it uh, uh, on the screen uh, as it goes. And then you can just say, okay, I've got enough now. You know, those light trails are long enough, or whatever it is that yeah, that water is 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 uh, you know misty enough now. Whatever it is that you want to do, that that can be quite um, quite impressive actually. And um, but I, I tell you what, I think going back to the question Jeremiah just asked about the future of photography, the, this reminds me of uh, the the stuff that we talked about. It's one of those two minute papers, I think, where um, uh, they could take a picture of the the Trevi Fountain without any people there. Yeah, you know, or the or the Brandenburg Gate, or whatever it might be, uh, and they did that by harvesting many many photos. I really could look forward to having that capability in my camera, or or maybe maybe I suppose it would have to be with an accompanying app or something like that, and you could just throw a hundred photos at it off an SD card that mm. you've walked all around a site. Um, and you could you could do uh, you, you could build something automatically that, that took away all the people or whatever if that's the thing that you wanted to do i think that might be quite good fun i want yeah, to do the opposite i, I want to take the architecture away and only see the people <laughs> How about that? yeah that could be good too yeah yeah let's have an inverted mode that should just be a one click thing really, sure, shouldn't yeah. it? Just a, run, a, run, a thousand, that would a be thousand cool. people staring yeah. at nothing a nondescript yeah. cool. crowd of people interesting yeah that would be really yeah. cool Very, that would def, would that, 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 there's a show in that there's a proper gallery show in that and then, yeah, yeah, then you have yeah, different yeah. crowds of different attractions and you have to guess what uh, attraction that was yeah, yeah, well, could, yeah, by the shape of the crowd. Yeah. Where were they? Yeah, go to a football <laughs> game and photograph the crowd, but no game, nothing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nothing there. I just, think there's there's uh, there's uh, something in there. I have to think plans. a bit more about this. Mm. Yeah. Um, Could be fun. How about our picks of the week? Yeah, I yeah. I um I've opened them as far as I could. Uh, thank you very much for that. The future of photography is. In slow shutter photography, I've uh, I'm shamelessly going to plug one of my my tiny little side projects that I've done. Go for it! It's titled Monster, and uh, it is self portraits. <laughs> I can see why. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is self portraits um, that I've taken. With those are not edited; they are straight from camera. They are long shutter cool. uh, pictures. Um, oh, they're with, very cool. In a dark room with one with a camera on bulb in one hand and a flash in the other hand. And uh, mm. it's it's me firing the flash at my own face several times <laughs> while moving around. And it's a bit of a nightmare fuel thing, but I'm it actually kind of is, quite yeah. happy Salvador how Dali. they come out. It's, it's, a, it's a bit Dali. It's it's I smell Picasso. NFTs. I smell <laughs> NFTs. Do you? I think they're great. This, this one actually yeah, gives the method really away. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this was pure boredom and experimentation. And um, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> Jeremiah, hit, a hit me up about you the in NFTs. Monsters, I Inc. You're going to be in the next movie, Mo Monsters Inc. movie, aren't you? I, I, I think I should do this. Yeah, but that's the stuff you do when you when you get bored. Um, let's see. Next up is Adrian. You're bringing us. Uh, I've got two picks of the week. Ways to week, ways to so. spend money, right? Ways to spend money, indeed, yeah. So uh, which one are we going for first? Ah, this one. Okay, so yes, so I got a new phone this week. Uh, I got the new iPhone 13 mini. Oh, uh, the mini? And the mini. Did you not yes. get the 12? Uh, I did. I had the 12 Ooh. Pro Max, which was great. Ooh. And do you know what, though? As, as I've started getting out and about more, mm. um, uh, it is. it's, it's so not tiny. so great. Oh, um, it's t it's t it's smaller than than an iPhone 6s. So oh. um, we still have an iPhone 6s in the house, and it's marginally smaller than that. But of course, the screen fills the whole of the footprint of the mm -hmm. phone. Uh, so it's it's got a a, a thing that's um, a screen that's bigger than the Ultra iPhone 6s, wide. even though it's physically smaller. Um, and uh, so th the thing about it is as well, it was like, uh, you, know, you don't have to worry about shooting off, pro, uh, you know, switching off pro raw anymore because it's not a pro camera. It's not a pro phone. So it doesn't have the raw in it and and stuff like that. And it's missing a telephoto lens that I've had. But um, it's going to be I'm going to end up using it more, I think, um, because 
uh, even as a camera, I'm going to end up using it more because it's it's smaller, so it'll be in my pocket instead of in the mm-hmm. rucksack on my back or something like that. But I enjoyed having the 12 Pro Max, a very, very capable camera, lots of computational capability as well. Uh, ultimately, though, not the right one for me. So uh, because I've now gone from the very top of last year's range to the very bottom, the entry <laughs> the entry level iPhone I've now just bought, um, my, my, my 12 Pro Max, the sale from that page for pretty much all of the new ones. So it's almost a almost a, a cost neutral change. But, and, uh, but that's and you one. can finally get it into a single pocket. Fully, I can put it, uh, in my, yeah, yeah. I can put it again, in, yeah, in my <laughs> front jeans pocket again, which is nice. Uh, and so uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's been an interesting one. That um, having a big. By the way, they're they're getting rid of them. Uh, I, heard, the, I saw a rumor that the iPhone 13 might be the last one they do a, a yeah. mini on, wow. um, yeah, which would be a real hmm. shame, I think. But apparently, they're not selling. The, the rumor said anyway. I mean, it's well, you bought one, of so you're uh, <laughs> proof yeah, of the I'm opposite. set now for the next. Yeah, I'm You're good for eight months. Five years. Uh, five <laughs> years. Five, five, six years, hopefully. So. All right. What's that so, second yeah. pick about? Uh, this is my other new camera this week. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, a plastic brick, um, which says Canon on the front of it. It's really oh. heavy, actually. It's, it is very plasticky. It's from the early 80s, and it is really heavy <laughs> as well. Um, it is a Canon T70. Uh, so uh, it's an SLR Um it is it's a strange camera actually it's one of the early yeah it's one of the early computational cameras from canon it predates the eos you mean cameras, you mean electronic uh, cameras that there's no computation in that camera sorry other than the yes shutter i speed. do mean i do mean <laughs> that but, it, but if you opened it up it would have a green pcb in it i'm sure absolutely um, but yeah. uh the uh the the, 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 the it's got Lots of different program modes, all of which seem to be aimed at approximating aperture priority, but don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just it's it's just one that uh, I'd gotten to the point where I didn't have a 35 mil camera. Um, uh, I've sponsored uh, at least one Kickstarter uh, from a friend of mine um, who is going to be sending soon the results of that, which is a new black and white film called Agent uh, Shadow. Excuse me, <clears throat> Agent Shadow. Uh, from Cosmo Photo, uh, and uh, I thought I'll, I'll just get a, a little cheap point and shoot. It's effectively an SLR point and shoot. It's one of those ones you have to leave it on program mode because if you don't, it'll just be too hard and you'll miss all the shots. Can I <laughs> so. can I ask a question about it? The the plastic sure, yeah, yeah. on it, the plastic on it. I do have a sound in mind when I look at this, and it's when you press it together, when you squeeze it, it's it creaks. Is that the kind of um, thing it well, does? Let's, does let's it try creak? it because I'll bring it out. I've got it on the desk here beside me. Yeah, I, don't know if you get, I can rub my fingers. I can over hear the plastic that. And you can hear, listen to this. That okay? Here, it's, here's, it's 80s plastic. A, yes, <laughs> it's 80s plastic. Yes. So listen to uh, listen to yeah. this though. Just give me a sec. And. Oh. Ah, <laughs> it's is, also entirely motor wide. <laughs> that is wonderful. All right. So, yeah, um, so thanks for sharing. Imar. <laughs> yeah. What did you bring? Um, I brought Francesca Woodman just for the uh, team. Um, her photos are stunning. They were self-portraits often, sometimes other people, but always with the figure move, like blurred. And oh, look at that. Fine art was, with, a sh- uh, with a slow shutter. Yeah. They're s- superb. And um, apparently she took her own life when she was only 22. Oh, no. She didn't know. Wow. Yeah, so why are my heroes all these? Because <laughs> you're Irish. Tragic, tragic figures. <laughs> Look at Irish. <laughs> yeah, that's Part it. That's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. That's amazing. Like but just stuff. really fragile. The way the figure kind of blends into the background. and Beautiful. Sort of becomes. Uh, really beautiful. Mm, really lovely. So yeah, uh, like where, to, where to look up? This is yeah. this is yeah. one. Okay, so so normally when we finish a show, and uh, Jeremiah, we will get to your pick in a second. When we finish a show, I have a browser open with all those tabs, and then <laughs> I later on when when I edit the show and put everything together for publishing, I usually go through those tabs again. This is one that'll stay open for a while. Thank you for that. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, last but not least, Jeremiah. Uh, oh look. 
Daniel Gorgeous. Castellano, he's a Montreal-based photographer. Absolutely wow. one of my <laughs> oh, wow. favorite photographers. Yes. Working. Are they really uh, impressionist, uh, uh, aren't I, they? I cannot say enough about his work. It is so beautiful. It's so consistent, and it's never boring. Um, wow. And it's more than he, photography, he never, for sure. <laughs> it, yes, he, he, uses, yeah. uh, he uses cameras and, and I think, uh, brushes. Um, you know, I, I, I know the techniques that he uses, um, but he uses them with such an adept, skilled hand that, that his work, it just speaks to me, uh, the mood of it, um, mm. the, I guess, the overall balance. Some things are extremely impressionistic, others mm. a little less so, but they are... I think a masterwork of both slow shutter and post-production abstraction. Wow. This, this is going to sound a little bit odd, perhaps, but it, it, it's a very different in, in visual style, but it kind of reminds me a little bit of Banksy as well. Mm. Um, but no, not uh, Possibly, I think it's because the, the subject in, the, in, in Castingay's work is, is often very sharp in focus and then the rest of the background sort of you know, uh, is washing away. It just, for some reason, it says Banksy to me. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it's the maybe it's the mono, maybe it's the monochrome nature of it that uh, yeah that maybe does yeah some, some they have a kind of a stencil sort of stencil yeah it maybe the stencil like, actually yeah this one the for example this this thing. has a very Banksy vibe here to me mm. yeah okay because mm. you, you get with the Banksies you get the the stencil bit is yeah. very specific isn't it very mm. tight lines you know mm. very, right. very sharp edges and maybe maybe it's that kind of thing i don't know it, they don't look visually similar at all but it's just mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's but something yeah, it's subconscious going on there mm. yeah yeah definitely. so i hope I, I hope we've inspired uh, people to get beyond um a sharp we didn't really even talk about focus uh, you know oh but, yeah because there's uh, an entire new episode there, just about focus exactly <laughs> yeah selective yeah. focus depth of field is a great um subject for us actually pretty yes. sure mm. focusing is something you do after you actually, take your yeah. shot these days isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's very likely with the cameras we have these days with all the computation all the multiple lenses and the the, the lidar the depth sensors and everything that's a yeah, the times are changing. So anyway, yeah. the future of photography might be in shutters that are open longer than usual. So that was it for this week. Thanks, everyone, for your time. And uh, we shall be back soon with more. Until then, everyone, take care and bye-bye. Bye. 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 You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Thank you.